just uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, tell us about your uh, dog life journey. Uh, well, I'm uh, Lamont Shockley. Um, I'm from Chicago. Um, I actually live in Phoenix, Illinois. Now nah, it's a suburb in Chicago. But um, I've been to dogs my whole entire life. I think just like any other uh, dog man, a uh, woman that's into dogs, uh, I pretty much just like born into dogs. Like uh, when I, I got baby pictures with me and my dad, he got pit bulls and uh, he had rock rollers after that. And, and then he started getting American bulldogs and we went to getting some barbels and and after that, that's when we started getting into crossing dogs. So we went from barbels into crossing. And um, like I said, I grew up into it. So I was going to all the shows with them, uh, all the little dog events every weekend, like uh, bike work shows and stuff like that. So it was like pretty much basically half my life. And um, I knew like at a young age, I was like, well, I'm going a, I'm to a get like four dogs and I'm going to do such and such. And I was just um, pretty much waiting for my opportunity to come. So when I turned 16, I had um, ended up buying a dog for my uncle. I didn't have to buy a dog, of course, it was my uncle. But I guess he was, like, teaching me a life lesson at the same time. Like, I guess nothing free. So he charged me for the dog, whatever. It wasn't that much, of course, but he still may, may pay for it. So mm-hmm. I got him. And um, I knew everything behind the dog or whatever. I mean, him and my daddy was breeding dogs together anyway. We, we pretty much had uh, siblings of each other dogs or whatever, stuff like that. My daddy just wasn't doing a whole lot of breeding at the time, but my uncle was. So I was around him a whole lot more, just, you know what I'm saying, helping him with puppies and, and stuff like that. And um, I ended up buying a dog from him, and it was a Neo, Neo Barbara Pet. And um, I seen the dogs, you know what I'm saying, before the end that he had the need be bred that Neo to a couple of dogs beforehand and um the Borable bred her to straight pits and stuff like that game dogs and stuff like that and uh the dogs is pretty decent um they just ain't really had a size that I like they look they was more like bigger pits to me mm-hmm. and they act like bigger pits they still was super drive you still had um the game that's to them um but like I say, just just a little bit bigger than, than the average pit bull. And that, it just wasn't big enough for me because I just wanted a more uh, man-stopper type of dog. Mm-hmm. So I needed something with some more size. So I was like, man, um, we were like, we should breed uh, one of the horrible pit females we had. Like, we should breed this to the big Neo. And, um, that was around at the time. And we were like, yeah, you know what? That's a good idea. Woo-woo. So I'm like, ah, right, yeah. So we uh, end up hitting the lady up. And um, she agreed to it. We did the breeding, and we ended up getting the male that I ended up buying. And then he ended up keeping the male off there, too. So, of course, he was going back and forth about who who dog was better and such and such. And um, that dog uh, was actually named Colossus. And that's the reason my line is called Colossal Master, because my uh, line is based off him. Uh Man, he was like one of the best dogs I've had, best guard dog, pre- protection dog. Uh, he had nice size on him. Um, he was like a he was like a giant pit bull, uh, more like neo bone to him. Still had good movement movement to him. Uh, man, he was just a real nice dog. And I was like, man, I want to keep this line going. You know what I'm saying? I want to lose it because at that time we were using dogs that was. From the 90s, that was pretty much, to me, like the golden era of dogs because it was a lot of uh, uh, good dogs back then. It wasn't all pro stuff and stuff like you see nowadays. Like, I kind of like the Corso Wiz with all the boxes and stuff going into mm-hmm. it and all the stuff. It wasn't like that in the 90s. It was like pretty much dogs was real pure. It was real good Neos. Uh, pretty much good at every breed it was. I mean, it, it was a couple of follows and some dogs, of course, but for the most part, it was a lot of good dog breeds out there. I think a lot of people who are into dogs that been around dogs that long, they agree too. They know like, oh yeah, that was a, a time that it was a it was a uh, decent amount of a good dog. So that's where my line come from. Um I used a couple of uh say newer dogs, I guess. Uh, not really the older blood line. But that's I think that's probably like one dog I think I use. But um a lot of stuff is like the old 90s bloodline stuff like that but anyway um so i had colossus 
and uh, I just wanted to keep it going from that. So I was like, um, but it'll be a good thing to breed them too. I like so I take them back to a neo or uh, a corso. Um, you know what I'm saying? Just I was just playing around, just thinking in my head, what should I do? So I was like, um, you know what? I'm gonna take them to a bull master because they had the the body style that I liked. It was a real solid dog. Um, still a, a good guardian dog. Mm-hmm. Um, and not really. It's it, it, one of the most athletic massive dogs, mm-hmm. but I knew that if I crossed into what I already had, I'd bring athleticism into the puppies. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, and then on top of that, when you breeding like that, you got to be a, a you got to have an eye for it. You got to be a good breeder. You can't just put dogs together because at the end of the day, you are trying to accomplish something. Everything got to complement each other. Everything got to be consistent. Everything got to look alike, act alike. It ain't about color. Color come later on in life you know what i'm saying it ain't about that it's about what the dog could do first how the dog act what do you do around your family um and stuff like that so that's the kind of dog that i was looking for and i, I luckily all those years that i was doing because i've been on it for like 14 years now mm-hmm. going on 15 years now so all them years i just literally been picking out consistent type of dogs i just always knew what to look for and i, I think just like i say just doing so much research on the breeds and knowing what every dog breed that I put into this, all the history about them, where they came from, how long they've been around, what they actually do, uh, what they're supposed to look like, uh, what flaws come with the dogs, uh, what pros they got. Uh, you need to know all that if you're going to cross and try to make something because at the end of the day, every dog breed is made up from other dog breeds. It's, it's not like a rock roll or a German Shepherd was just put here and it just came out of nowhere. And it's just that every dog breed out here was made from other dog breeds. So I'm not really doing nothing new. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it's just that a lot of people just don't really know how to put the right dogs to th- together to get something consistent. And luckily, I just, like I say, I did the research and I took the time and don't get me wrong, I had a few flaws. Everything wasn't perfect, you know what I'm saying? But I knew how to eliminate the dogs that I didn't need and put the dogs that didn't have that didn't have health issues, uh, didn't really fit my standard for what I was trying to do. Just eliminate them. It, it, ain't nothing wrong with that, you know what I'm saying? I ain't saying kill a dog, whatever like that. I'm talking about just sell them, get rid of them, place mm-hmm. them. You can sell them for pet poly. You ain't, mm-hmm. you ain't got to use them in your breeding program. So that's pretty much what I was doing. So, uh... I bred to that bull master. I got a, a puppy out of that. Um, I got a male, and then um, I ended up getting a corso female. Um, bloodline, but she was a real nice female, blue, um, tall, athletic, real high prey draft female. I liked her a whole lot, and I bred her into that neo uh pit male that I had, and I took a female from that, and um, I took. Both uh, puppies from each little bred that together, and then I that was pretty much the start mm-hmm. of my whole Colossal Master line. Um, actually, I think that was one of the best litters I ever had. Um, it was actually a half, of course, it was a half brother, half sister breeding, mm-hmm. but it made some of the best dogs ever. But you know, in breeding, you got a live breed and in breed to make, make it what it is anyway, so mm-hmm. everything kind of worked out the way it did. So, I, I Got those two dogs, bred those dogs together, got little mates. Um, I kept some. Um, I played some with people that I knew. Um, and just kind of kept it going from there, doing a little breeding and stuff like that. So everything pretty much came consistent. Um, it, came, it, it got my Colossus look that I wanted in the beginning, but it made it um, even bigger and even more athletic. Um, and, and really, and I think their prey drive went up a whole lot more, too. Um, he was already a, a high prey driven dog, but I think what I'm getting at, they like smarter, um, just really, really nice dogs and really coming out consistent. And like I said, I don't really care about color, but the color coming out consistent, too. Like I get black brand do a lot, um, brown, blue, um, maybe fine every now and then, but those colors are the colors that I normally get on the regular. Um, I think my males, they average from about 27 to 30 inches, um, 140 to like 160, 160 pounds. Um, my females, they're about 25 to 27 inches. Um, they like 130 to 140 pounds. 
Um, it's not like a huge difference in them, but of course, it's a male and female. The males always should be bigger, so mm-hmm. yeah. Um, then anyway, they real nice dogs. I got a couple of dogs that's on farms right now. Um, I got one that's in Crown Point, Indiana, working the farm. He's doing real, real good out there. He actually the first dog that I actually sent on the farm, and I ain't really no height. I knew he was a real high prey driven dog. I guess the people who get dogs like that, they kind of know what to look for. I'm from the city, so you know. We don't really have a farm life out here. We got a couple of, you know, like coyotes and stuff like that, deers and stuff like that. But we don't have like hogs and a whole lot of wilderness and stuff like that. Yeah. But I get a lot of people who live on, you know what I'm saying, uh, properties like that. So when they do come see my dogs, I guess they know. They come, they, they pretty much go after the dogs with the real high prey drive, mm-hmm. which I figure they need because they need a dog that's going to chase stuff off. You know what I'm saying? That's pretty much outside the majority of the time. You know what I'm saying? So, it all work out. Um, I got a dog that's uh, actually a skin eye dog for an older couple uh, that I sold the dog to a couple of years ago. That was another first thing. I ain't never had a dog that I was using. He doing real good, which was really shocking to me. I mean, I, I know for a fact like these dogs can do pretty much anything I think that you uh, train these dogs to do, but that was just something new. Uh, when they when they bought the dog from me, they told me that um that's what they was buying the dog for, whatever like that. Not only to be a protection dog, but for seeing that dog for the guy wife. And I was like, yeah, just let me know how it come out. That's definitely new. I definitely want to know. So they um send me pictures and stuff like that, keep me up to date. And I was like, man, that's amazing. That she got a big massive type dog that she walk around with, not dragging around and acting crazy and seeing all, all different these animals and people and not acting up and stuff like that. Wow, that's that's good. So uh, that's a new thing uh, I'm definitely happy about. And um, like I say, I'm just trying to continue what I'm doing and make make this stuff better and better. Um, at the end of the day, as a breeder, you should improve. It's not about keeping your dogs the same or downgrading. You should want to do better. And I think that's what I'm uh, starting to do. Um, get better and better as time go past. So um, right now, um, I got two males. I just had a litter a week ago. I'm going to keep a female from that. And I had two litters. Um, man, I had three litters back to back. So I had two litters like a few months ago. So I'm, I got a female from the first litter that I'm keeping. She's real nice, real athletic. Nice prey drive. Uh, man, I think she's going to be the, one of the nicest females I've had. So I got big plans for her. Um, I got the other female that I'll say I'm going to keep. I think she's going to be a real uh, prey driven dog, too. Her mama got real, real high prey drive. And her daddy got real high prey drive, too, but not as high as the mama. So I'm hoping that it kind of even out because I don't want a dog that's like uh, – hyperactive that's jumping all over you and stuff like that i hate dogs like that mm-hmm. i think that's why i'm some masters because i have pit bulls and american bulldogs and stuff like that and they just like too active for me i like them don't get me wrong and i maybe because i was younger and i was a little bit more active i was running around and riding bikes and now that i'm old i'm kind of just go to work come home mess with the dogs chill out and go go to work the next day so i don't really mm-hmm. need all that yeah and, uh, so that's, I think I'm, that's why I'm into a more massive type of dog. But don't get me, don't get it wrong. Like they are some of the most most athletic masters that you ever seen. They not like uh, these AKC dogs, like these English masters and neos and stuff like that. That's that look good. That's just there for sure. Mm-hmm. And can't move. Ain't gonna protect. Ain't gonna do none of that. No, they do everything. They move. They protect. Um, I'm doing a whole lot of training with them. Over the next summer. I meant to do it this summer, but I had a whole lot of other stuff that was going on. So I said, this summer, when I get my uh, two females, when they come up, I'm going to put a whole lot into them. And I'm going to promote them two dogs a whole lot. But mm-hmm. Pretty much just promote them for my whole line. Because I think everybody in the world should have one of my dogs. <laughs> right. I think they, I really think that they're that good. Because I think if, if you really, and I think, and I think, I can't say everybody in the world, I think it's, if you really like into a, a big dog mm-hmm. that actually is to act like a big dog. I know some people like couch potatoes, and that's cool, but sometimes you want a dog that's going to get outside and jog with you. You might be a person that walk, not even if you jog, you might walk around the block or walk around the track or whatever you do, walk around the field or however you do it. 
You want a dog that's gonna go with you, and that's gonna actually last the whole walk, and not let, and not walk for five to minutes, and he land out on the grass, passed out because he wants some water. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's the kind of stuff that you see out here now, and that's the kind of stuff that I'm staying away from. My dogs are nothing like your average master that you're going to run into. And I got a lot of people that got dogs for me that I think that will vouch for it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, they, uh, like I say, and I'm not just saying it's because I'm the breeder and I'm just, I, and I won't, like I say, everybody can get one. I'm really telling the truth because at the end of the day, I know what I'm talking about when they deal with the dogs. I've been doing, I've been dealing with dogs and researching dogs my whole entire life. Mm-hmm. So, and, and it's not just masks. I know, I know about every breed, toy breeds, bully breeds, uh, herding breeds, everything. I want to know everything because I didn't want to be in a situation where somebody was talking about some breed and I'm just clueless about what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I think that's another, that's another issue with a lot of people out here. They can almost get sold anything because they don't know too much. They just know about certain stuff. A lot of people don't even do the research. They just like certain breeds because their friend got one. You know what I'm yeah. saying? They think it look cool. And it's like, oh, yeah, he got a big dog, so I think I'm going to get one. And it, it don't work that way. You need to do your research on dog because at the end of the day, you don't know if you're going to be able to handle a dog. A big dog with an attitude in real life what people don't realize is a lawsuit waiting to happen. Yeah. Because if a dog that kind of, like a dog that size in real life, not only can he take down a man, he really, if, you, if he that vicious, he could kill one. And you in big time trouble after that. Yeah. So if you got a dog like that, you definitely need control, and you definitely need to do your research to know what you're dealing with. Um, it's all kind of soft, uh, big breeds that you could get. Um, that's not as aggressive and stuff like that. But I think with my dogs, I think you get the perfect blend of the two. You get a real family oriented dog that's good with the people in your house, good with the kids. But at the same time, do not mess with strangers. And even like, I mean, if you got family members that come over, they come over consistently and stuff like that. They cool. But if you got family members that's from out of town and, and you know, that don't really come over too much, don't even know they're not going to act a fool and come straight off and try to bite them. But they're going to be real weary of Like they might stick by you the whole time or stick between you. Like you might be in a room and the dog just laying in the middle of the room. Or he might sit by the the guest that's coming in mm-hmm. he ain't gonna try to attack him or nothing like that he'll smell him and let him rub him and all that but he's just kind of waiting to see just getting the vibe from you They're like are they okay or what because if not i'm right here i could do something to him you know what i'm saying so i had dogs like that i'll tell that even with my own friends that they let let them in the house but would not let them outside the door until i let them outside the door and they wouldn't try to bite them or nothing like that you know what i'm saying they, they ain't trying to kill them but at the same time, they just let them know, like, hold on, you ain't getting up out of here. Almost like we got to do a, a pat down before you get up out of here. I, I don't know what you got. Yeah, he, he, he said he was friend, but I'm his real friend. So let's see. Let me, if he lets you out, then it's all good. And I was like, all right, well, that's good. And, that, and that's something that I never, I'm not even trained in for. They just naturally know that. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's what I'm doing a real good job at, 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 at not only keeping dogs that's big and athletic, but keeping a smart dog that actually know when to react. Because you get so many people who are like, oh, I want to work in this, and I want to work in that, and get that, and don't even know how to handle it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's crazy. You get, like on Facebook, you get a gang of people and all these pages. Like, I want a working dog. First, yeah. Of course, you want a dog that's going to protect. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But a real working dog, I don't, I don't think people know the difference between like a guardian dog that's just gonna guard and a real protection working dog a real protection working dog a lot of people can't handle a guard dog it's cool he gonna guard he gonna bark he he, he gonna alert you but a real working protection dog is ready to bite he ready to go with something and if you can't handle that you don't need one of them yeah you know what i'm saying so that's something that a lot of people gotta get gotta get gotta get through their head when i'm always happy when when the people that I'm giving a dog to happy, because at the end of the day, it ain't about the money. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's about people having a good dog at the end of the day, and especially for what I'm trying to do right. at this point. I'm trying to get people involved and in, and in actually into what I into my breed. You know what I'm saying? And and actually, so they could see the difference between getting a colossal mastiff and going to get up. A corso uh, or a press or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know it's 
it's uh, it's risky. I know I'm, I'm putting my dogs up against dogs that I love known out here, but at the same time, I kind of think my dogs can compete with them at the end of the day because I think, like I said, I got years in where I've been creating the same type of dog over and over and over, and it's consistent. And hey, I don't even feel at this point, I don't even see a lot of consistent corsos and stuff like that. So I, I definitely think we could probably compete. So talk about each breed that's been used and what qualities and what was your thoughts on each of the breeds that you did use and why you used them. Okay. Um. Well, the Neo, uh, we we want the Guardian Instinct um, because they actually are real uh, good guard dogs. Um, and I want to keep the bone. I like the bone on the Neo too. Not I ain't want to uh, as heavy bone dog is a neo mm -hmm. but i did want a bigger bone dog so i want to keep that um i want the borable because with the borable in real life to me the borable is one of the best masters that you could get because they so athletic mm -hmm. and they actually smart and they and they actually are real good family dogs now to me the borable was a hit or miss on working on the working dog wise because you could get a, a dog that's extremely hot or you could get a dog that's extremely soft so it's kind of hit or miss, especially with, I don't know, at least that's how it was when in the 90s. That's when we had board was like around 98, early 2000s, stuff like that. And back then, they was real nice dogs, real athletic uh, and all that. But it was kind of a hit or miss. So I wanted the board for the athleticism and the family orientation that they get, that they so good with kids and stuff like that. And um, still keep my dogs with with the size, you know what I'm saying? Um, I still want to use dogs with size because I want to keep size going too. Um, the Corso, I use Corso um, because that's another athletic dog for us. But she was a really, 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 really nice Corso. And I, I like, I like, I had to use, and I'm not even a Corso fan, but she was one of the nicest female Corsos that I ever seen. And I was like, I had to use, and, and the way that she act, the prey drive, and have legs she was, I was like, yeah, I got to use her. So that's why she was used. And um, she had height. That's another reason, too. She was height. She had too tall. And I want to get tall dogs. I didn't want, to, I didn't want short, stocky, big dogs. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I wanted a, a more tall, stretched out, athletic dog. So uh, all those dogs that, that I used, all, all of them had pretty much that in, in common. Um the bull massive, I wanted that for the mass, uh, the more of the structure, uh, like a solid type of dog. Um, still got that guardian instinct, just like like the chest and like I say that they solid and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And on top of that, and add more bulldog. Yeah, into what I'm doing too. You know what I'm saying? Even though it's not like direct, because of course the bull mass have been around for the longest but it's still in its ancestry you know it got the old English bulldog in there yeah. so it kind of go hand in hand with me breeding my pit bull and stuff like that into it and stuff mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. so uh are you we used to red boy because we use straight red boy uh pit and uh uh game dogs not the pit bulls that you see like the hawk and stuff like that not them kind of pit bulls mm -hmm. real okay. <laughs> game dogs so uh we use that for the tenacity, uh, the athleticism, uh, the aggressiveness. I'm talking about animal-wise, not people-wise, because right. game dogs, I think that's one of the bad things that they get. People think that they bite people. But don't get me wrong, you got lines of pit bulls that do, and that's with any breed. But mm -hmm. for the most part, pit bulls are real uh, people-friendly. they real animal-aggressive, but mm -hmm. people-wise, they're real family. That's why when people had with a... Uh, game dog stuff like that they always had like a bigger dog american bulldog a band dog or something protecting the game dogs back there you know what i'm saying because mm -hmm. they don't want people going back there stealing their dogs because that was going on too i mean if you know about pit bulls i'm pretty sure you know yeah. game dogs have been stolen back then so you needed a dog back there to protect them so uh that's why i want to be used to pit though i wanted the athleticism the tenacity um and another thing, the help. That's that's I think that's another thing that people uh don't realize. The pit bulls are some healthy dogs. Mm -hmm. That's one dog that you in history that you really see that don't really run into so many health problems. And I and I wanted to put that into my master breed. 
everything was used for pretty much athleticism and and guardian instinct mm-hmm. um and size you know what i'm saying i want a bigger dog i know a lot of people that's against the bigger dogs they think oh yeah big dogs can't move but at the same time i think it depends on what big dog that you use um it ain't really about the breed name like a lot of people hit neos and stuff like that oh that big sloppy net dog and stuff like that like i never every neo is not big and sloppy you know what i'm saying no. so if you use an athletic style neo he gonna he gonna make athletic style dog don't get me wrong he can make a big sloppy dog but that's on you as the breeder and having that eyesight and choosing the right kind of dog that you want to to actually go with the idea that you had in the beginning, you know what I'm saying? If if you go if you're doing stuff like that, you got a picture of what you're trying to do before you even put these dogs together. And that's what I had. I had a picture of what I was trying to do way before I could put the dogs together. So when I was putting dogs together, and I had letters, and you know, when you crossing every litter, ain't every dog ain't coming out the same, ain't looking the same way. You know what I'm saying? You might, especially like you might have a Neo and a pig or or whatever. You're going to probably get half the litter like a pit bull. You might get half the litter like a Neo. You might, and you might get some of the like both. But at the same time, you got to have that eye to know what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You might, if you want a more pit bull looking dog, you're going to pick that pit bull looking dog. If you want a dog that look more like a Neo, you're going to pick that dog a little more like a Neo. If you want the simulators of the both, you're going to pick both. So it really just depends on what that breeder is looking for. And that's what I think I did a real good job of picking out of every litter that I ever had, picking the same type of dog. Every litter, the same type of dog, or the same types of dogs I'm keeping too. Who are some of your uh, current like mentors in the game? Who do you look up to and who have you, and past or present? Um, I got a lot of guys like here in Chicago. Um... Like, it was a guy, Richie K. He was the one of the first guys I knew that was, like, crossing dogs like that. That's how I really got into it. Because uh, we was going at his house or whatever like that. And he was one of the first people I was saying that had these big, gigantic masters crossed with masters and bulldogs and all kind of stuff. And I was like, man, this is something crazy. And I kind of got into it from there. Um, her, uh, my daddy, of course. Uh, Tim Odom, I don't know if you ever heard of Tim. He be on Facebook too. He from Indiana. Uh, Tim, uh, who else? Uh, I talk to Mike Satilli a lot. Mike Satilli Jr. I mm-hmm. talk to him a lot. I talk to him pretty much every day. Um, who else? Who else out here? I know I'm probably missing a lot of people, but those are people I could think of off the top of my head that I kind of mess with on the regular. So, what would you say like your your near future goals are and and what what is pretty much the end game what are you hoping for you know 10 years down the line i really want them to be in in dog shows and i really want a lot of people around the world to have one um because i really think that they're that good i want a lot of clubs i want to do some clubs and stuff actually i want to get a lot of that stuff together this summer what is upcoming summer mm-hmm. uh get a couple of clubs together well, the people who got the dogs coming together on probably like a Saturday and stuff like that, do some training and you know barbecue and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, like I say, man, if I could get these dogs some shows and really get them in the right hands of some real good breeders, um, I think the sky's the limit from that, right. pretty much. Yeah, no doubt. <clears throat> what are uh, what are some dog breeds that you uh, you like but you never owned and, and or, or interested in? Um, let me see. I like the the bully cooter or the bully cutter. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I, I like that dog. Um, I like how it look. Um, uh, I like the aggressiveness aggressiveness of it. Um, but at the same time, I don't really know a whole lot about the dog. Mm-hmm. And from what I'm hearing, they don't really act like your normal dog or whatever. So that's kind of something I'd be weary about, especially when you got kids. Now, me by myself, I mean that don't really worry me. But the fact that when you got kids and your girl and stuff like that you can't have a dog like that around mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying your kids like that that's dangerous so but that's something i'll be into um i actually like st bernard i've been seeing a lot of st bernard's lately um because i work out in indiana 
and a lot of people in Indiana got St. Bernard, so I'm, I'm kind of liking those. And I see them like in dog shows and stuff like that, but like being actually like up and close and personal, I'm like, Dad, these dogs huge. And uh, so that's one. That's another. Uh, I like the Tulsa. I ain't never had one of those. Uh, I like the Fila. Uh, I like the... It's another dog from Pakistan. It's kind of like the, the Bull Terrier. I think it's kind of like the Bull Terrier of Pakistan or something. Is that the, the Gold, Gold Terrier? The Gold Terrier? Yeah, that one. I, yeah. I love that dog. I like German Shepherds, but I personally wouldn't get one because I'm just not into, like, uh, furry dogs. Not actually furry, but hairy dogs yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's really the only thing. Other than that, I, I like them. I like Malinois. I like the, the I like the prey drive, but they just got a little bit too much prey drive for me. Yeah. That's the only thing. I, I like the fact that they actually are willing to go though, but I just they just too hyper for me, and I ain't I ain't that.